Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, and welcome to the next video in my series documenting the solo albums of Peter Hamill. So for this video, we are talking, of course, about Over, released in 1977, and uh, this is another sort of key, key moment in the catalog. Very famous album, and rightfully so, definitely a fan favorite. Um, this is, of course, the breakup album, so the songs on here chronicle the breakup of a long-term relationship that uh, Hamill had endured prior to recording this. So as such, it is a collection of the lost love songs. Now, the lost love song, that's kind of a, a key element in Hamill's career up to this point. At least, um, there's at least one lost love song on all of his solo albums leading up to this. And there's a couple of the Vandergraaff albums as well. But never before had there been an entire album of these songs um, put together. And as such, prior to hearing this, I actually had a false expectation. I kind of had the idea, that, oh, you know, it's the breakup album, there's going to be lots of, you know, somber songs, it's going to be weepy, there's going to be lots of ballads on it. And I couldn't be more wrong. I mean, stylistically and musically, this is a very, very diverse album. Um, you know, it's almost uh, it's almost like a summing up of all the styles that Hamill had taken on up to this point. I mean, we get the riffy rock song, we do get a nice piano ballad, a couple of great acoustic guitar songs, and we get some epics as well, some, some band-oriented epics. Um, so it's a great summing up of the styles, you know, up until this point, but there's also a lot of forward thinking on here as well. Uh, most notably, we have the addition of um, violin. It's the first time on a Peter Hamill solo album that, we, that he plays with a violinist, of, in this case, Graham Smith. So, um, so that's quite interesting. Uh, also, the centerpiece of the album, this side of the looking glass, features an entire orchestral arrangement. So there's, there's lots of old, there's lots of new. It's a, it's a very unique album, actually. I feel Over doesn't quite sit as comfortably alongside albums like Chameleon, Chameleon in the Shadow of the Night, Silent Corner in the Empty Stage, or In Camera. Uh, and it also doesn't quite sit too comfortably with, you know, the future now PH7 black box era as well. So it's, it, it, is, it is kind of a standout album in that regard. Um, so that's quite interesting. It was, of course, recorded uh, right in the middle of a very, very busy period for Van der Graaff Generator. Um, you think, you know, between 1975 and 1977, we get God Bluff, Still Life, World Record, Over, and The Quiet Zone, The Pleasure Dome. So, you know, very short span of time and a lot of work was being done. Um, and this is this album comes right in between the two Van der Graaff periods. Of course, the um, the classic lineup, the God Bluff lineup, I believe was still on the road when this was um, when this was recorded. Although I think yeah, it may have been coming to the end of its uh, lifespan. And um, of course, the album that followed this, Quiet Zone, The Pleasure Dome, is the Van der Graaff era. So that's a different lineup. And interestingly, the um, the musicians that are on this album are the exact same musicians that would uh, eventually form the next version of Van der Graaff for Quiet Zone, The Pleasure Dome. So we get uh, Peter Hamill on guitar, piano, vocals, songwriting, obviously, and uh, Graham Smith on violin. The return of Nick Potter is quite interesting. Of course, Nick Potter was uh, the original Van der Graaff bass player way back in the day, or not the original, that would be uh, Keith Ellis, I believe is his name, is the original. Um, but Nick Potter is back for this, and of course we have Guy Evans on drums. So even though we've got this lineup of musicians, I don't think they all play on the same track at once. That is kind of a key thing. So it's not really a band album. There are, you know, it's, it's a, a solo album with band elements, I would say. But uh, it's interesting because we can kind of see, you know, we can see the formation of the next version of Vandergraaff happening here, which is, uh, which is quite interesting. So, um, yeah, lyrically, of course, as I've said already, it is, it is the breakup album, so um, a lot of the songs tend to deal with that. Um, some of the songs on here are very, very autobiographical, which is kind of, it's a rare thing for Peter Hamill to be that direct, I think. I mean, obviously there's been a few examples, German overalls from Chameleon is, is a good example. Um, but there's some very, very, you know, intensely personal pieces on here, which is uh, kind of a unique thing. Not all of them are personal. Some of the tracks on here are, um, you know, it, it's very much clearly fiction. And I mean, even the personal songs are a fiction, I would think, are a fictionalized account of, you know, what happened during the breakup. But, um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a good album. So let us take a look at the tracks then. So it opens with Crying Wolf. This is a great track, one of the uh, the riffy rock songs, so like a rock and roll or a tapeworm. You can kind of hear um, elements of the K group in there musically. Uh, but it's a great riff too, that da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. 
It's a you know, it's, it's one of those one of those key riffs that comes up in rock and roll. But um, Hamill can lay claim to that one because it, uh, it, it it fits it fits perfectly. I like the drums too. The drums are almost kind of like um, it creates a dissonance. Just the the, the way that uh, Guy Evans swings that intro against that straight ahead rock riff, which is quite interesting. But uh, yeah, really, really good song. Very upbeat. Again, you know, b before I ever listened to this album, when I threw this on, I was kind of floored by it. I was, you know, having this expectation of slow, sad songs, and then here's this big, riffy rock song uh, right off the bat. But um, yeah, great track. Great track to, to open things up. Uh, then we move on to track two, Autumn. This is the uh, the piano ballad. Very much a uh, very much a solo piece. This no less band elements. Um, and I, I really like the uh, the way that um, the piano kind of falls apart during uh, during the choruses. There again, it it captures that whole um, the whole feeling of you know a relationship breaking down. Um, lyrically, it's kind of interesting as well. Definitely not autobiographical. This song kind of um, it uh, it documents a couple that has just compromise to the point where they probably shouldn't have and they've gone on to have kids and you know kids have grown up and now they kind of face each other and say well what next sort of a thing so it's a hypothetical sort of a song but um, it's a good track very good track for sure the piano ballad of the, of the album uh, moving on to track three this is one of the big famous ones on the album Time Heals um, now I, I think in principle these songs don't really lean on Vandergraaff too much, but if there is one that leans in the Vandergraaff direction, this is probably it. It's much more of an epic piece, about eight minutes long, and there's you know multiple sections and there's you know lots of tension and release and whatnot. So uh, in that sense, it is kind of a classic Peter Hamill epic, but uh, it very much belongs on it. Very much belongs on this album. There's 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 parts of it that are really quite upbeat as well. Um, and it, it kind of leads us into the more personal tracks as well. It's um, there's more emotional turbulence to this track, and I think that's why the upbeat moments come up in, in the in the song as well. They kind of chronicle what it's like to be in that kind of emotional state, where you know one minute you're miles high, and then you're you know farther down than you've ever been. I think it does a really good job of that. But very famous track, and uh, it, it's a piece that he's performed live many many times uh, since this album's release. Uh, then we get to the end of side one. We get Alice letting go. Uh, now this is one of my favorites on the album. This is where this is where things start to get really, really personal. And I think some of the lines on here are, you know, definitely a direct, you know, a direct account of what happened, you know, between him and his uh, and his girlfriend at the time. And um, yeah, it's a really, really good song. Really, really good song. It's very striking. It's the classic um, Peter Hamill acoustic guitar song, but. Um, well, it, while it's very tranquil and laid back, there's a lot of tension to it. Just the way that the chords are strummed, and there's there's a certain aggression to it. Um, but it's just a great song as well. I mean, it's got a great little hook, and you know, with you know the the ooh, do I have to let go? That's a, a really really strong little bit. And um, yeah, it, it's it, it's one of my favorites on the album, actually. Very good stuff. So we flipped the album over. You can see very briefly Mr. Hamill playing uh, Mergley's Three is the name of the guitar on there, named the, which is of course the guitar that uh, the song Mergley's Three was named after. Um, very interesting. I don't want to get off topic. So um, side two opens with this side of the Looking Glass. Now this is clearly the centerpiece of the album. It's one of the very personal songs, and uh, as I mentioned before, this is the song that features a complete orchestral arrangement. So um, it's very grand and very swooping and very you know very intense. Um, you know I, <laughs> I try try to imagine what. Um, the ex-girlfriend would have thought if she picked this album up and then heard just how intense the whole thing was. Not that I could make any comment. I was not there, obviously, and uh, shouldn't really be making comments about personal lives, blah, 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 blah. But anyway, this kind of looking glass, very, very famous song. Um, and, you know, again, this, this, there's going to be moments of controversy in these videos. A lot of people would point this out to be the the, you know, the very best thing on the album. I already said it's obviously the centerpiece, but it's not my favorite. Uh, it's not my favorite thing on the album for whatever reason. This one um, again hasn't grabbed me quite like the other pieces. I mean, obviously when I when I listen to it and you know I listen to the whole album in sequence, it, it comes up and it's just wow, oh my God. You know, it's a very very intense piece, but um, doesn't stick with me for quite quite as much as songs like Alice or Betrayed or Crying Wolf even. And, well, Crying Wolf, maybe not, because that's you know, kind of a straight straight ahead rock song, but... <clears throat> excuse me. 
for whatever reason, yeah, the, this side of the looking glass is it's never quite been my favorite. And that, that could be blasphemy uh, for some of you, I, I don't know, but that's just uh, just my personal opinion. Uh, we move on to track two of side two, and we get Betrayed. This is the other acoustic guitar song. and um, The real notable thing about here is, of course, Graham Smith's violin. And it's just a brilliant piece. I absolutely love Betrayed. This is the, the angry song. This is the uh, um, you know, feelings of betrayal, obviously. But uh, again, you can you can hear the tension just in the just in the playing alone in Hamill's the way that Hamill strums the acoustic guitar, and then you know the the whirlwind of violin takes it to an absolutely uh, another level as well. Terrific vocal performance as well. I love I just love the the sheer uh, um, veracity of it. I don't know, is that even a word? It's a, it's a vicious vocal performance. That's a word. But very very I mean all, all in all, Betrayed is one of my favorites on the album. Um, and it, it does well. I think you know, this album overall is a really, really good document of you know the male perspective when dealing with this kind of emotional turmoil. You know what I mean? It's a, it's, it's a great uh, it's a great vehicle for for you know someone who's who might be going through something like that. Um, yeah. Anyway, moving on to the next track, uh, the penultimate track on the album. On Tuesday, she used to do yoga. Now this one isn't quite as intensely personal as um, some of the other tracks, uh, like the preceding three tracks, but uh, I think there is still a hint of autobiography there. Certainly a bit of self-deprecation, which, you know, like I said, that's kind of a natural part of the male, you know, um, coping process, I think. There's always going to be that self-deprecating um, attitude. But uh, really, really good song, and this is again, this is the, just the, the way that he plays the guitar. I think is another very forward-thinking thing. You know, he, the the notes are just picked in a, a very kind of haphazard manner, and that becomes almost standard when you get uh, like quite later on into the catalog when we start talking about albums like um, you know Singularity and Thin Air. Um, it's it's funny. I can hear a thread of a certain um, a playing style that, uh, that that can be traced to to yoga, but very famous song. Uh, it's been played many many times, played quite consistently since the release of the album. And um, I, I what can I say? I'm a fan of it. Particularly like the the end where you got those big. You know, I think there's the synthesizer slam, <laughs> which is a very very you know dark and uh, startling ending to the piece, which is cool. Great uh, great song though. I like yoga. Uh, and then we move on to the closing track of the album. This is a, I guess you could call this another epic. This is Lost and Found. Uh, and this is a great piece. This is the, um, the ray of hope, the light at the end of the tunnel, I would say. I mean, it's still, you know, there's still a sense of uh, melancholy to it, but it's also, I mean, th there's a big sense of hope as well, particularly towards the end where, you know, like, put on your red dress, baby, we're going to, you know, we're going to... Um, we're going out on the town tonight, or whatever. And I, I think you know it's 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 the the moment when a man can finally move on and start to uh, learn to love again. <laughs> I suppose difficult to talk about these these topics without being silly. Um, but Lost and Found is a terrific track. I love. I really like the bridge. The bridge is really cool. It's kind of an awkward transition because we get that la rasa la rasa la rasa la rasa that the kind of the song kind of ends and then it just kind of changes very abruptly. It's a bit. Um, bit jarring, but uh, I really love that, that bridge section a lot because, of course, we have a melodic reference and a lyrical reference to La Rasa from Van der Graaff Generator, so there's kind of a cool link between Still Life and, uh, and Over with that, which is really, really cool. But, um, yeah, and then it manages to wind itself back up, goes back into the main song, and uh, I, love how, I love how Lost and Found finishes as well, with that everything's going to be all right. And he says it almost as if it's a question, which is, um, you know, I think uncertainty is a, is a very common theme amongst Hamill's, uh, Hamill's collection. So I think that's very appropriate that the last line should be kind of uneasy like that. But, uh, yeah, there you go. This is my, uh, me chatting about Over by Peter Hamill. Another very, very famous album. A very good album as well. So, uh, stay tuned for, uh, my next video. The next video is going to be taking on three albums. So that's going to be the late 70s. So that'll be The Future Now, PH7, and The Black Box. And, um, just as a spoiler, that's, like, one of my favorite periods in his, uh, his, um, collection. So stay tuned for that. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment and all that fun stuff. And uh, stay tuned for some more Peter Hamill videos in the future. Many thank yous.